not sure if you have one, you may. We're talking about what's going on with respect to foreign maids. They most often work as domestic helpers here in Hong Kong, and they're continuing their campaign for legal status in the city. Of course, most recently, if you've been following what's going on, the government won this appeal against ruling that would essentially have allowed these maids to apply for permanent residency. Across the boards, the city has been divided. Lawyers for one in particular who's been really spearheading all of this is Evangeline Abano. They said that they will fight on. There are more than 100,000 maids in Hong Kong who would have been eligible to actually apply following this original court decision that happened last September. Foreigners and other sectors can apply for permanent residency after seven years working in Hong Kong. Well, the Court of Appeals said that there is an acute demand for domestic workers in Hong Kong, but it ruled that their stays should be highly regulated to ensure that they're in Hong Kong to really fulfill one specific purpose, which is what they came here for to do, which is to be a maid. Now, the judges rejected the argument that the law barring domestic workers from permanent residency is, quote, unconstitutional. Okay, joining us now is Paul Shea. Let's talk to you. You're a solicitor and a member of Hong Kong's Legislative Council. So good to see you. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us you. today. How would you characterize what's going on? I know what side you're on, but why exactly are you on that side? Well, basically, it's for Hong Kong's benefit to start with. And essentially, uh, Hong Kong is a small place. And Hong Kong, like any other country or places, should have the right to decide uh, what kind of immigrants they want to take into their country and the place. Uh, essentially what happened before is Hong Kong has lost its right to decide for itself uh, who should or who should not be included in our immigration um, uh, uh, category. So the, this, this, uh, this decision uh, by itself of course has re sort of reaffirmed that uh, the right for Hong Kong to decide. But all it's not decided yet, we still have to go to the highest court in Hong Kong, unfortunately. Yeah, it seems like this process is going to be quite a laborious one right. and quite a long one, no yeah. doubt. From their point of view, you can understand the reasonings? I can understand that. They've been here for a long time. They have a lot of contribution to Hong Kong society. That's for granted. But having said that, um, uh, like I said, uh, Hong Kong should have the right to decide in the first place whether they have this, uh, this category of immigrants to start with. And uh, in, I mean, it's a continuity of what's happening in the past. Before 1997, before Hong Kong resumed to uh, Chinese sovereignty, Hong Kong has always uh, accepted uh, foreign workers into Hong Kong uh, with the understanding, not just Hong Kong people, but also those who come to Hong Kong to work, that they would be here to work as such, but not having the right to uh, acquire permanent status here in Hong Kong. Paul, oh, clearly this is a very contentious issue because yes. there's so many different dynamics at play, right? You have the political issues, you have the economic ones, you have the social ones, mm -hmm. and really at the heart of it, if you put it all down, there, if this is a human rights issue. It this is, is the right for these people, these humans, to come in and yeah. to serve, but also to live like humans. And right now, Hong Kong, as, it, as the most uh, recent uh, verdict rules, that they should not have that right. Well, for those who work in Hong Kong, they have every right, like any other, every other citizen, all these freedoms are guaranteed. Well, exception of the with right the to residency. the right to permanent residence in Hong Kong, with the right of the, to vote, perhaps. And it's like all the aliens in the, in the U.S. Before they become U.S. citizens, they have all the freedom, all the uh, rights protected by law, but they don't have the right to say to vote. They don't have the right to do a lot of things that only citizens, Americans, can do. So I think uh, we, it's a question of whether we can decide who should or should not cross that line. So if you use and you layer on that economic lens when you take a look at this issue, which no doubt many of these politicians and perhaps some of these judges are using when they examine this issue. Right. What is the economic impact of allowing these Filipino maids to actually become citizens, full-time residents? Well, I for one actually advocate that we should have a proper scheme to allow maids to apply to become permanent residents here but not as a, sort of as a result of accidental error or omission in our law which permits them to stay or overstay after they've been here for a long time. So I think that's the line to be drawn. And obviously they have a lot of contribution, like I said, to Hong Kong economically and socially. But uh, ultimately it's a question for Hong Kong people to decide how they should sort of uh, constitute their own uh, population here in Hong Kong. So as you say, you, what you would propose then would be more of a forward-looking, but of course this is a backward-looking problem because right. all these people are already here. So why not perhaps just stagger their entry into formal uh, residency and citizenship? That we can consider as well, but not according to our first instance decision. That would have granted the right to, uh, to all the people who have been here already over seven years. That's something that Hong Kong people cannot accept, unfortunately.
Paul Shee, thank you so much for your time. Thanks Clearly a uh, very important issue, one that is going to have social and economic impact. Indeed. And we'll be watching it very closely. Thank you again for Thanks taking the time to come here.